What would you do for an upgrade? I'm asking for a friend. I have a feeling a lot of you guys would pretty much sell your left nut just to be able to upgrade your PC. Well, today we're going to talk about that very thing. I kind of got in a bit of a kerfuffle, an argument, with the hardware unboxed on Twitter. Did not mean to make it an argument, anything like that. Just wanted to have a discussion. The 14600K dropped to a value price of $150 on Newegg before tax. After my taxes in Texas, it was $160. And I sent that to him because well, it came with Battlefield 6 and also Assassin's Creed Mirage and pretty ding dong good deal there. 14600K, 14 cores, six performance, eight efficiency cores, and you're getting two free AAA games. One of them that actually is highly anticipated and not even out yet. I don't know, I thought this would be a slam dunk, like easy recommendation, like, of course, that's a great deal, great multi-core performance, gaming performance that honestly is not even gonna hold back something like a 5080 at 4K. And yeah, you, 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 you have enough performance there and the platform, it's not really gonna matter. Once the 14600K is obsolete, I mean, you'll probably, we'll probably be on AM6 by then and AM5 probably won't make as much sense like they're recommending now. Do they recommend AM4 now for new builders? No, they recommend AM5. Well, they'll probably do the same thing with AM6, right? So yeah, uh, I thought this would be kind of like a slam dunk and I just wanted to talk about it because also I saw a, a forum post on Reddit, on the ZTT, Zach's Tef Tech Turf uh, Reddit. Someone posted, should I get the 9600X or the 14600K? And well, the 14600K is like 150 bucks and then the 9600X is $200. They perform about the same in gaming and well, the 14600K comes with those two free games. So it's like, and it's faster. Like it's got like 40% more multi-core than the 9600X. So it's like, why would you get the 9600X? The only reason is for upgradability. And guys, I understand that, but how much does that mean to you? That's my question here today. To Hardware Unboxed, it means a lot. And this is not throwing shade at Hardware Unboxed. I actually love them probably in the top like 0.1% of watchers for their content. Like I watch their stuff every day. Um, I just wanted to have a discussion today. Like let's cut out the fanboyism, man. Like you're, you're, you're like, this is what he told me. This is what he told me on Twitter. Okay. I, I, I tagged him. I said, pretty good value proposition here with the 14600K, you know, uh, in Texas with our tax, $160, those two free games. And I paired it with a B760 motherboard that came with free RAM. Well, not free. Uh, it was like $40 for 32 gigs. So overall, my price was $312 after tax for a 14600K, 32 gigs of DDR4. And then, um, a B760, which had, which had PCIe Gen 5 uh, 16 slots, and then two Gen 4 NVMe slots, and it had Wi-Fi. Like crazy value for that, $312 for all of that. Meanwhile, if you buy a P, uh, CPU at MSRP, it costs $300 like for a six core from AMD. Now they aren't uh, $300 now. What he sent me was a Ryzen uh, 7500F. Man, the birds are going crazy. Saying the alternative like, there's no reason you should even buy Intel. Like what's the 14600K, why would you buy that? Because you can get a Ryzen 7500F or whatever for $150, okay? 7500F, $150, not saying that's a bad deal. Uh, I've seen them on AliExpress for $110. I would rather go with that. I would feel confident in that uh, for price performance, but $150, fine. It's six cores, no iGPU, pretty much bare bones. Um, and then he recommended me get this, an ASRock motherboard, which was $110, and it didn't have PCIe Gen 5 in the 16 slot. It might have had a Gen 5 NVMe. Uh, so it's like, okay, um, I don't know if it had Wi-Fi. I think it had Wi-Fi. So we had that going, and then he recommended me $80 kit of DDR5. So his build came out to his platform after tax, uh, tax in Texas. $50 more than my 14600K, but he's getting DDR5 and he's getting an upgradable platform. What he's not getting is um, he's losing on 50% multi-core performance. The gaming performance is gonna be identical with these two. And then he's also missing the game bundle. And then he's missing an iGPU, <laughs> which is kind of important, right? Like an iGPU is at least worth 20, 30 bucks. And if you're using it for things like transcoding and Jellyfin and video editing, it's even worth more than that, and it's actually super beneficial. So we just listed some benefits, you know, to my build. There's benefits to that build, but for some reason, 
Steve comes out and says there's literally no benefits to the 14600K route. There's not one thing that he could see that can benefit. And he says from ga for gaming standards. It's like, okay, for gaming, they're the same performance. So, okay, sure, outside of gaming, maybe, you know, it, only inside gaming in a vacuum, they're kind of like almost identical, right? Uh, but on the Ryzen platform, you get upgradability. But here's the thing. If they're identical for gaming and the Intel one costs $50 less, that means it has more price performance. I understand upgradability, but Steve, listen to me if you're watching this. The people I sell computers to don't upgrade their own computers. They don't know how to build computers. That's why they come to me. And if they ever do want to upgrade, they come back to me because they've had such a great experience. Um, and after, you know, it's usually like two years or so if somebody wants to upgrade, which it's very rare that somebody does. And they usually want to upgrade their GPU, not their CPU, okay? Because CPUs usually, you know, it's not, they don't really hold back GPUs too much at the settings people actually play games at, right? So, yeah, um, this up hole, I'm going to just obsessively upgrade my CPU every single generation for five, maybe 15% gains at max. It's, it's just not a thing, dude. It's, it's not a thing for normal people. Us enthusiasts, sure, we like to do it. I, I get why the appeal. Um, I need to go towards the park over here. There's a lot of crickets. Um, I get the appeal, man, but it's not worth paying more money and getting less features. You don't have an iGPU, getting 50% less multi-core performance, and also not getting these two free games, which I actually really want Battlefield 6. So yeah, I'm gonna buy the 14600K, I already ordered it. I got Battlefield 6 for free, and I'm gonna sell it for a profit. And whoever gets it is gonna have a really good experience with that RTX 40, 3080 I, um, I'm building. I buy this 14600K to flip. I, I, I buy PCs, I flip them, and people are very happy with my services because I offer uh, pre-built PCs, they're custom built by me, that are 30% cheaper than competitively uh, performing pre-builds. Like, for example, if there's pre-builds commonly found uh, with the RTX 5060 around $1,000. Well, I'll give you RTX 5060 performance at about $700. And that with them, you know, after tax, it costs $1,100 from them. So it's really like $400 less to get that performing PC from me. And <laughs> it's great. Now, do I have the same level of CPU as they have? They usually have like 14400F. So sometimes I just put in um, like a 12600K in there. And I think that's around the same performance. Or other times, like, I have a uh, 12100F, it's a four core, I got it for $60 and you know, using the stock cooler, that's all that uh, uh, CPU cost, even including the cooler, where something like you know, um, 14600K, you'd also have to buy a cooler. So yeah, um, you, it's all about, I'm just kind of rambling, but this is kind of like a rambling video, uh, me just talking my mind. Long story short, when you're building a PC, for to sell when you're building a gaming PC specifically, your main goal is to get the best GPU possible. Don't even think about the G CPU until you've picked a GPU you can afford, right? Once you pick a GPU you can afford, then and only then do you pick a CPU that will not bottleneck this GPU at whatever resolution you're playing at. You have to determine your monitor as well, guys. So if you have a 4K monitor, I mean, just about any CPU in the last few years is going to be great for you, even when you go up to like a, a 5090 for the most part, guys. I, I mean, maybe not a 5090, but maybe like 4080 level, like any decent GPU, any decent CPU, it's going to be a great combo when you're playing at 4K. 1440p, you're going to need a faster CPU. And then at 1080p, especially if you're playing at low settings and you have a great graphics card, yeah, that's when the X3D CPUs come into play. But other than that, I mean, they aren't really that much of a game changer that, as people think they are for their price. It's all about price to performance. We, man, I could go on about this all day. We look at graphics cards. They don't come out at their MSRPs. They're, they're overpriced. And we're like, okay, no, I want good price to performance. I want my dollar to get me more frames. But when it comes to CPUs, we only look at their testing in a vacuum that's really not indicative of real world performance. So we end up paying, you know, two X more for our CPU in the case like 14600K and 9800X 3D is gonna perform very similarly for most people in most settings, right? <laughs> so people end up paying like 450 for a 9800X 3D when they could have got a 14600K for 150. And in, at, at the end of the day, they play at 1440p with like a, um, 
you know, 5070 or 9060 XT 16 gigabyte GPU, and they're getting the same performance because they're limited by their GPU. So I don't know if any of that came out how I meant it to. Oh, there's this, this is a dog park over here. It's a dog park. Um, but yeah, I don't know if any of that came out how I meant it to come out, but basically, <laughs> I'm, I'm just amazed at how bad Intel's mindshare is right now. In the comment section of that Twitter post, I mean, I don't have any, uh, you know, ex followers, so no one really came and liked my post. Like, no one really liked any of my comments, even though they were like straight up like facts, straight up logic, man. Um, but people came and, you know, because he has so many uh, followers, they liked his post. He, his response was, well, I guess if you're flogging piece, cheap PCs onto people, it's like, they act like the 14600K is just utter trash. Like it cannot even run like Minesweeper. When in reality, this thing is 50% faster in multi-core than the CPU he recommended is and identical in gaming performance and cheaper. And it comes with two free games. So I'm thinking we're a little bit biased here, guys. I'm thinking we're a little bit biased on the hardware and box side towards AMD. And this kind of objectively proves it when you have a better deal like significantly better deal. And you still choose the more expensive option because of the logo on the box. Now that logo, yes, it does give you an upgrade path, but I mean, a, a 14600K buyer is not gonna be looking to upgrade to AM6 anytime soon, guys. He's not. I, I'm telling you, I know the market, at least here in Texas, that, that's not gonna happen. Of course, people came in the comments and uh, Hardware and Box came back and he said, well, here's that, you know, an AMD build that's equivalent. And actually it's $15 cheaper than your Intel build, but no, he didn't add up the tax for his build and I added up the tax for mine. So once I added everything to cart for him, it was $50 more expensive and it didn't come with any game bundles and it doesn't have an iGPU and also it's 50% slower in multi-core. So what do you guys think? Am I crazy? This is a huge discussion right now for budget builds, 14600K or Ryzen 7500F or Ryzen 7600. I mean, to me, the, the, the choice is simple, man. I, I understand upgradability. Um, how much does upgradability really matter to you though? Like <laughs> you would think some of these people, even if they got like a 14600K for like 50 bucks, they would still pay $200 for a Ryzen 6 core. This is called a monopoly, guys. This mind share, and AMD's Ryzen's mindshare is stronger than NVIDIA's RTX mindshare now. And let me tell you, that is not a good thing, guys. Expect price increases for AMD products across the board because at this point, you guys will buy them over Intel no matter what it costs. Like, price performance is not a factor for CPUs right now because Intel's mindshare is in the gutter. I'm thinking 14600K at this price with those bundles all day long. I want to play Battlefield 6. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hardware Unbox, love you. You probably won't watch this video, but yeah, that's all I got. Silicon Steak, signing out.